Good evening, welcome to the hangar here at Maria Stein, where tonight WSN brings you a Midwest Athletic Conference matchup. The new Bremen Cardinals are in town and they're playing the Marion local Flyers. It's a special night for us here at WSN. We got the band back together again. Mark Miller and Jerry Stodgrass, Mark Shine, and we are here to bring this game to you. Mark, you came all the way across the state. Should be a big MAC matchup. Well, you know, me being a football guy, I'm kind of hoping a football game breaks out. We got two state champs here, but a lot of these guys will bring that aggressiveness onto the basketball floor. I'm excited to see it. Jerry, you've seen a lot of these games in the Midwest Athletic Conference. It's a war every night. You know, it should be. When you look at the scores of these two teams, we're definitely in for a defensive battle. And you're right. We have the band back together, but please don't have us sing. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good thing. All right. Jerry, you did the, uh, the new Bremen and our pregame stuff. What are you thinking about when we see the Bremen Cardinals this evening? Well, you know, first of all, big test for them tonight because they're going to have to battle that inside size of Marion Local. So, number one, they need to rebound the basketball. And that goes on both ends. Offensive rebounding, they're right now rebounding 15% of their own shots. That's a big key. Two, they need to execute. They're averaging about 15 turnovers a game. They need to execute a little bit better. And thirdly, and I think a big key for them, is they've got to play all four quarters. They're outscoring their opponents by five in the first quarter, but they're outscoring opponents by 28 in the fourth. Big key tonight. It is. Mark, you looked at the Marion Local Flyers, and they've got a significant loss tonight. How about the Flyers? Yeah, well, Jaden Mesher, kind of a do-everything, let them in steals, let them in three-point goals. So Coach is going to lose a big piece to his chemistry puzzle right off the bat, both sides of the ball. Going to look inside to the big guy, Kanapke, who's going to have to pick up the scoring load, and whoever replaces Mesher on the perimeter is going to have to handle the ball because he's going to be pressured. Jerry mentioned defense. Almost under 41 points a game. Are you kidding me? That's what they give up on defense. So it should be a good battle that way. Home court will give them some advantage. New Bremen has a single conference loss. They don't want to fall two games behind. Mary Local comes undefeated. They're tied with Coldwater coming in tonight. Weather starting lineups to the tip off. Well, after this, you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the hangar here at Maria Stein. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Ultimate Outdoor Ohio, the Ohio distributor Structure X, Pergola X, and Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, Seamless Spouting. Let's go through our starting lineups this evening for the visiting New Bremen Cardinals. Number two, Aaron Tiemann, six foot junior, averaging 13 a game. 24 is Cooper Scheib, six foot senior at three and a half points a game. Number 30 is Alex Holman, 6'2 senior at 6.9. Evan Ike wears number 32, a 6'3 senior at 6.9. And David Holman, 6'1 senior, one of those do-everything guys, 4.9 points per game, 3.9 assists, two steals, and four rebounds for him. And that's the starting lineup for the New Bremen Cardinals. For the American Local Flyers, they will go this way this evening. They will start number four, Luke Holman, six-foot senior, averaging just under three a game. He starts for Jaden Mesher, as Mark said, broke his nose a week ago, out for a couple of weeks. Second starter, Tate Hesler, is number 12, 6'2 senior at 6.9 and 5.2 assists. 15, Brandon Ike, 6'1 senior, three points a game. The ever-improving Austin Niekamp wears number 23, 6'8 sophomore at 8.8 .8 points per game, six rebounds. And the big man in the middle, Jack Kanapke, 6'9 junior at 15.3 and 7.9 rebounds. Our officials this evening, a veteran crew, John Derryberry, Steve Oren, and Rodney Stinson. And it is a full house, man. Yeah, what a shocker, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we were talking about this in pregame about, you know, how the kids, they're all here. You know, the parents are here, the grandparents are here. It's everything you would expect in the match. The Bremen in the dark uniforms wins the tip. This is Tiemann with the basketball. Very local, of course, in their traditional man-to-man -man that they play. 50 is David Holman. There's a three by Tiemann. Bounces around and connects to rebounds. We'll go the other way. You know, they're not a great, they don't put up a lot of threes, but Tiemann is hitting 61% of those from the year. Penetration dribble. Holman goes hard off the glass, and the rebound has come down to Evan Ike. We'll go the other way. Here's David Holman. Bounce pass. Good pressure defense by Niekamp. Forces a miss, and we'll go backwards. Already a pretty quick pace. You know it is. Yeah, but no points. What a surprise there. Yeah. Huh? 
And that's going to be a challenge all night long, taking that in the paint when New Bremen goes in there. Well, every shot will be challenged. That's just the way these two teams play. Evan Ike at 6-3 has the assignment of matching up with a 6-9. Kanapke just tipped that ball out of bounds on the bounce pass. Very local, 8-1 on the season, 2-0 in the conference. New Bremen 5-3. They are 2-1 in Midwest Athletic Conference play. New Bremen scores it at 54.6. They give up 45.8. Very local scores it at 52 a game and gives up 40.8 in a patient possession that you see from there. There's a lob inside. That went knee camp to Ungren, a knee camp to Kanapke, opening basket. You knew it wasn't long before they were going to work that high low with the two big guys. There are so many areas that we saw Austin knee camp play early in the season that he is improving on and passing is one of them. Some stuff on the floor right now and. What a luxury for a big guy to be a good passer, right? He got great vision, got the long arms, can throw over top some people. I remember when we watched the two bigs last year and we just said, can you imagine the improvement in them each and every year by the time they graduate? College coaches are salivating. The pass is stolen by Hess inside. Hess will push the other way. You want to know bad news if you're in the Mac, Jerry? Knee camp's a sophomore and Kanapke's a junior. <laughs> <laughs> they got another year of doing this together. Mm -hmm. Same look inside. Yep. Timmons slapped it loose. And we're going to get our first foul of the basketball game. They're really going after that high-low. Well, Timmons did the, what he has to do, and that's as soon as one of the big fellas take the ball down low to try to whack that thing away. David Holman gets the first foul of the basketball game. Here's that lob inside again. And that shot short. Here comes Holman the other way. To the rim, Holman high off the glass. Nope. Good effort. Austin Niekamp rebounds. New Bremen not afraid to go inside on There's, Marion Loka. There's the new starter tonight, Luke Holman going off glass. You know, Mark, you said it, I think, in pregame, talked about the defensive average in the 40s. Like, well, when do you see that anymore, you know? And just great, solid defense. Three ball rattles out. Niekamp has another rebound. Flyers with all four points in the game. Pullman, good closeout that time by Cooper Scheib. Well, with the injury to Mesher, they lost their three-point threat outside the arc to balance off those two big guys inside. Had 28 made threes coming into this game, but he's on the bench, not in uniform. And a triple drive score the goal was Brandon Ike. Straight line drive. Three different flyers have a basket at 6-0. You know, it's just so difficult, though, if you're New Bremen to help off somebody because you know what they're going to do as soon as they as soon as they pick somebody up. They're going to dump it off into Another one of the bigs. three by Alex Holman. They needed that one. Had Alex, to get that zero off the board. Six threes on the season for him. Now seven. Cuts the lead in half. Watching. Tate Hess matched up with David Holman. David Holman, one of the premier defenders and quarterback, of course, for the Bremen State Championship team. Hess was the quarterback for Marion Local. Do you think they collided at all on Friday <laughs> nights this fall? <laughs> Hess, Holman. Patient possession. Ike gives it up this time to Pullman. This is knee camp in the corner. Skip pass. Right to the goal and tipped out of bounds. He lost it. Lots of subs coming in. Number 10, Mitchell Randley will enter for the uh, home team. So if we get 23, Ben Saylor. And, and 44. 44, Dylan Bombauer in for Corey Stevens' team. Hey, it hasn't been long, guys, but we can understand why they're they're both good on defense, right? Oh, <laughs> man, they move their feet. They switch. Yes. With, I mean, just so smooth. Well coached defensively, both teams. Hess wanted to load that one up and could not. Pullman for three. Oh, what a rebound play by Austin <laughs> Niekamp. Down in the middle with nobody checking him out. You know, if you're a guard, it's, it's kind of everybody's dream to play with those big guys in there because, you know, you know if you miss it, hey, it's okay. Probably going to get the rebound. Penetration dribble cut off. This will be a three that will go up from Saylor. Both... New Bremen Cardinal baskets come from outside the arc. They only oh, gave him two, gave him but two. I thought it was a three. Been, yeah, I thought he was out. I'm going to leave that in my book as a three, and we'll change it if we need to. 
And there's a second foul of the game. Corey Stevens is asking the officials right now if that was a three as that foul goes to Alex Holman. You know, we both talked about the, the physicalness of this game and great defense. And, you know, I, I guess now that I'm no longer coaching, I can say this, but you really need some good officials on a game like this, some veteran officials, and we've got them on the court. Yeah, emphasis on veterans. Kyle, They're as old as we are, aren't they? Yes. Kyle Adi <laughs> in. Uh, who else checked in? Ungren. Uh, Aiden Eifert checked in. So mass substitutions. Who did I miss, Mark? Kyle Ungren. Okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Who wears number 30? This is Adi with the basketball here. Already four and a half minutes in, nine flyers have played in the game. Zone defense out of New Bremen coming out of that sideline inbounds. Shorter team. Teeman throws it ahead, headed to the rim is Saylor, and Saylor's got four in the game now. Well, Coach Gunnamiller talked about the, the, you know, transition, a lot of easy baskets, and stopping those, and th well, there you go. Okay, now they have changed that uh, initial shot to a three-point on the scoreboard, so give Saylor a three for that one. See, Mark, I told you we yeah. could officiate from up here. Yeah, we could. <laughs> Well, I know I, I've been to a lot of games, and there are a lot of people in the crowd who officiate very well. <laughs> <laughs> Held ball situation. Here comes a lot of those people back in the game. Quick break. It's a warm gymnasium, isn't it, men? Yes, yes it, is. it is. A lot of people. So we are tied at eight. Sailor has a three and also a two. He has got five. Alex Holman has the other three. Man, they've really screwed up my stat sheet now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do have an eraser. Gave you a pencil. I know. You know, Mark, you talked about, you know, a warm gymnasium. You look down at that student section and got to remember, this is not a uh, Division I school. This is yeah. every student in here is, you know, every student in the school is here. Cardinals come away with the ball. Sailor's had a real impact on the game since he entered. Here's Holman to the rim. He got to Sailor in a hurry that time. He was wanting to load that one up. Mike. Carter Elking has the basketball now. I missed him entering the game a moment ago. Holman, David working inside. This will be a three that'll go up from Bombauer. And rebound to Hess. Six minutes into this one, we're tied at eight. New Bremen staying with the zone. Got a turnover on it last time down the court or a couple times ago, and they are sticking with it. See, people say, well, you know, we need a shot clock. This is not a shot clock game. These are two teams that are just very solid defensively, and offense is probing to get shots. And, you know, I haven't timed it, but I, I'm sure each team is shot within 40, 40 seconds. Here's Ranley three. <laughs> Mitchell Ranley had made only one of those on the season. He's got two now, and his team leads by three. Well, that was deep enough to add up to two on that one way out there. Carter Elking finally finds Holman to pass to. This is Elking in the corner, saves it. Flyers, two threes, or zone, not being very active in this thing. Actually, Jerry, I think they're switching man. Yeah, yeah they, they, they just switch every, every screen. Holman, left-handed finish, nope. Fight for the rebound and put back up and in by Bombauer. Dylan has his first basket. 11-10 with 60 seconds to go, opening quarter. And that's what they're going to have to do. They're just going to have to scratch and claw for every basket, especially on that inside. Get every offensive rebound they possibly can. Skip pass and foul shot going to come out of this one as Brandon Ike gets fouled. Let's see who the call will go against. It goes against. Ben Saylor and our free throw sponsor this evening, Wright State Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Left-handed free throws. That one splices in. First free throw of the night. Mike has three points in the game. He's 50% free throw shooter on the season. Here comes Alex Holman back in the game. And we have a little conference with our officiating crew. Mm -hmm. 
not sure what they're discussing. If, if I read the, the thing right that came out from the state, Steve Orr has been doing this for 48 years and John Derryberry for 43. Wow. Okay, we're back to the free throw line again. Our second free throw by Ike. Brandon, 6'1", senior. Dead center on both of those. He's got four in the game. Aaron Tiemann. Lost the basketball. Hess dives for it. And it's going to be stolen back by, by uh, Holman. And it's stolen back again. Good heads up play that time by Ranley. Hess works inside and rolls it in. So great Hess decision that time. What a great decision. Marion Locals hit five twos in a row. Shooting it well from inside. Teeman scored us with a hounding defense on him this evening, and averaging 13 a game. And he turns it over under pressure. It's three on two the other way. Strip loose, picked up. Kanapke, blocking foul. And Jack Kanapke will go to the front foul line. Good hustle by the big guy. Yeah, and you credit the defense for that. Boy, that hounding defense on this end. Got the turnover and got, you know, got to the free throw line eventually. Carter Elking becomes the fourth. New Bremen Carter will pick up a foul here in the opening quarter. As Kanapke makes his first free throw. Free throw sponsored tonight by Wright State Lake Campus. Waiting to check in is Aiden Eifert. And he must be coming in for Kanapke because they won't let him in the game right now. Gavin Schrader entered the game for New Bremen. Makes both of those. Four points for him. You know, he's a 56% free throw shooter on the year, but, you know, as you can expect, that's his 40, 41st time to the uh, line. As he's you had expect. a lot of practice, hasn't he? You know, and the team's only 60%, so they've started off 4-4. Four and four. They may have been working on their free throws this week, huh? Right. Deep three. That was a little bit long. Flyers got a chance to get a shot before the horn. Here's a pass. This shot's going to go up by Eifert, and he missed off the back of the rim. Good quarter for the Flyers. 17 to 10 as we had the opening break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back at Marion Local, our scoreboard tonight is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor for the structure X or per Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. 17-10, opening quarter, six different flyers in the book. Any numbers there, Mark? Davis? I do. Two for five, two-point range for New Bremen. Five of eight for Marion Local. Two of seven from three-point range for New Bremen. Marion Local was one for three, only free throws. Four for four for Marion Local. Marion Local, seven to four rebounds. New Bremen with five turnovers. New uh, Marion Local with two. Flyer defense pretty good in that opening quarter, Jerry. Yeah, that's a lot of turnovers for a quarter, too. There was about four of them right there in midcourt. Right. <laughs> they couldn't get it going. There's Teeman trying to work loose. Unable to short jumper. That was a nice wow, move. Go sure play ends up with Cooper shy with a basket. Well, you know, I said in the pregame, though, too, you know, they're, they're, they really come on late in the game, New Bremen does. So they, one of the big keys that their coach told me was, you know, got to play all four quarters. Well, they did a good job of keeping it close in the first quarter. Here's Austin Niekamp for three. And rebound comes to Cooper Scheib. We'll head the other way. Oop. Long three. Rattles out. Rebound. Brandon Ike, who seems to be everywhere in the last couple of minutes. That ball's tipped loose. Good defensive play. Two on two the other way. And we're going to get our first foul. That will go against the Marion Local Flyers. That goes to Brandon Ike. So our free throws tonight, sponsored by Wright State Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Connor Shibes at the line. He's hitting 64 or 62% on the air in the line. Pullman re-enters for Marion Local. Makes the second one. Three points in the game for him. First three points of quarter number two go to the New Bremen Cardinals. Back to the man-to-man. -man. The lob inside. Oh, Good what help. a nice heads-up play that time. 
How did Dylan Bombarger play that one without stepping out of bounds? Got back in to save it. Here's Teeman. This time he's got knee camp on him. Deep three. Battle for the rebound. It ends up in the hands of Alex Holman. Kick out. You know, I really like how fundamental New Bremen is. You know, every single possession when they get the ball, you know, they've got that little shot fake. You know, they're ready to shoot when they catch the ball. They haven't hit real well from outside right now, but at least in the last couple of possessions, but still very good fundamentally. Here comes Hess. Ike. Coach Gullum, they're directing traffic. Trying to get the big guys both to go down low. They're looking inside. They've got a high-low setup right here. Here's Hess working the lane. 15-footer for him. Gets the back of the rim and falls. Hey, Hess. Well, he had to take that. There were, there were four New Bremen players camped inside on Niekamp and Kanapke. Teeman from 17, tipped into the hands of Luke Pullman. Hess has that one stripped away from him. Teeman goes the other way. This will be a three by Scheib. Nope. Gives it up to his teammate for a better look. And what we got here? A rebound foul. Well, you, you really have to be ready if you're married local because, again, every player gets that looks like it's going up. So you got to keep yourself, you know, composed because if they don't, they're driving inside on you. I was ready to mark that down as a three-point attempt in my book, and he passed it up for a better one. Yeah, until the big guy made it dark in front of him. <laughs> Team is going to get a break as David Holman re-enters. Holman. Bounce pass inside. This will be Holman. And he has it tipped away from behind. Just great ball movement by Norton New Bremen. They're aggressive with it, aren't they? They are. They're Just, not sitting and looking. You no, know, Chris passes and Holman trying to get away from Hess and can't. This will be a three ball that will go up from Alex Holman. Hess rebound. Throws it head to Kanapu, throws it head to Niekamp. Back to him. And we're going to get a foul as Dylan Bombauer will be called for grabbing. Kanapu's headed for the rim. You know, I've heard you guys talk about these two big kids, but I've not seen them before. They run the floor, don't they? They do. They do. They're yes, pretty they do. athletic. Yep. A lot of times you get a big kid in high school, and he just hasn't quite caught up to the way he runs and moves his feet, but these guys are pretty agile. Well, I'm not sure which one it was, whether it was Kanapke or Niekamp, but whichever one caught the ball, turned without traveling, and got it right to the corner. Mm -hmm. Good pressure that time, and Niekamp's unable to finish inside. This will be a three that will go up. Back to the rim, and good hustle attempt in the corner by Saylor, but he banged it to the wrong team. Hess into the lane, a little runner. Kanapke fights for the rebound, and it went out of bounds off a of Cardinal. You know, the pace is a little faster than I, I thought would it agree. would be. Yes, I, I, it is. Not a, not a lot of scoring right now, but that's not because they're out of control. It's just because there's great defense. Kanapke in the corner. Pullman. Zone on the out of bounds play. Well, they're doing a good job of getting around in front with Bombauer. Every time they get to the corner, he gets in front of Kanapke. Skip pass. Pullman. Mitchell Randley with the basketball. Now Pullman on top. Pass inside. This will be Randley. Not 
Brown, another three. That's the way it's supposed to work. You know, if they collapse inside, cross court pass, wide open. We moved it a goal that time. You can see they give that basket to it's an opposite for me. They give it to Alex Holman. Bodies in my way. I couldn't tell who got that shot up. Seven point lead. Tip loose. Steal by Sailor. Working inside is Elking. Always somebody there to help on penetration yeah. in there. Turn it over. Well, I've seen the Flyers now three or four times this year, and this is a typical defensive game for them. Now they defend well, they don't foul. <laughs> you know, they have two fouls, and, and that's just, it's not because they aren't getting called. They don't foul. Yeah, they're moving their feet and not their hands, right? And I think, I really believe when I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm looking at New Bremen as a very, very hard team to defend. Yeah. They're so quick with the passes. They, they, every person has a good shot fake. Their, their feet and hands are ready to shoot when they catch the ball. It's a hard team to defend. And, and they're all about the same size. You can't yeah. find that big guy right. matchup on That's what I was thinking. They're interchangeable. Yeah. They all score about the same. They all defend. They all rebound about the same. Here's Hess, lob inside. And Niekamp had it stripped out of bounds. Flyers have put five points on the board this quarter. Three of five points also have gone up on the other side as well. So we stayed at the seven point deficit. You know, when you look at it, you know, you know, Cardinals have done a very good job defensively inside, really, when you think about it. Collapsed yep. well. Here's a three. And I think we're going to get Jack Knapp here with the. What is that, Mark? Not over the back, on the on back. On the back. Yes, that's right. Uh, over the back is legal, on the back is not. Well. Comes Lou Bremen looking for a basket. Oh, turnover, miscommunication. Here's Hess. Doing a little 2 3 zone, trying to pack it in whenever they can. Hesitation three, back of the rim, and bang back out to Mitchell Randley. Made a couple of those tonight. In fact, he's the leading scorer in a basketball game with six. Knee camp in the corner at Randley. Randley for three. Well, now, well, Randley's hesitated yeah. the last couple and they haven't gone in. The first couple, I thought he just stroked them and they went. It starts working on your head, doesn't it? It, it does. You know, I, I never want to say that, but, you know, when you're a defender out there, if you're really thinking, you think, okay, he's probably not going to shoot it next time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, because he's missed right. a couple and yeah. it's just the way it is. Six different Cardinals have a single foul, so the next one will put very local into bonus. Tip loose, steal. There's a surprise, guys fighting for the ball on the floor, and Holman goes to the rim and will draw a foul. Well, that was incredible hustle to get that turnover, too. Hess gets the foul. While we shoot these uh, free throws by David Holman, Mark, I don't know whether he had a chance to see him in a state playoff game or not, but uh, he's one of those quarterback and, and defensive players, just an outstanding football player. And I asked a Marion, uh, or excuse me, an Abreman assistant coach at halftime, what is he? Is he a safety? Is he a linebacker? What is he? He said he's a football player. He's a football player. <laughs> he's a football player. <laughs> and, and we have seen those types come out of the MAC, right? Yes. I mean, they probably could be a running back. They could probably be a receiver. They're certainly going to play defense. But a lot of times they end up at quarterback. And when they lead their team to championships, it's amazing. Of course, and New Bremen won a championship this year. They're second. Warren JFK 38 6. Of course, Mary Local won their 13th, the 15 Kirtland 14 to 6. And I'll take that one season further when you talk about David Holman because those are the guys you just love on the basketball court. Kneecap just tipped that one in. He's got four now. The lead goes to eight. Well, yeah, he's got 4.9 points a game, 3.9 assists, 4.1 rebounds, two steals. 
Does it all. He plays defense, yep. competes, sets the tone for his team. And he can't block that shot. Pullman rebounds. 40 seconds to go. This may be a Coach Gutter Miller last shot time. Nope. Holman gets a steal instead. Three on two the other way. And he's going to go right to the rim and fight it up and score. Wow, tough shot. Three See, that's what athletes can do. Gets a steal on one end, gets a tough layup on the other. That's what athletes can do. And disrupted the opportunity for last shot that Coach Gutter Miller wanted. Let's see if he gets it this time. Kanapke came up to set the high ball screen and not sure where they're going to go with this one. Here yep. he comes. Now they're in a man to man now, I think. So. Holman just fought through a screen, yep. lobbed down inside. Kanapke muscles up. That one will count. There you saw the athleticism, right? Took away his left hand. He was athletic enough to lean over and shoot it up with his right. The high ball screen play. We've seen a lot of teams run lately. He's down screens and then posts up in the lane. That's exactly what they wanted right about the time they wanted it. And Evan Ike picked up his second foul. He's the only player. To, well, Brandon Ike has two fouls from Marion Local. Kanapke made a couple of free throws back in the opening quarter. He's got six points. And now seven. Four and a half seconds left. See if Bremen can get a shot. Holman tipped it out of bounds, and that's the way this half is going to come to an end. The Flyers will take a nine-point lead to the halftime break. Jerry, Mark, and I will be back with the halftime segment in just a moment. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the hangar here at Marion Local. The Flyers with quarter scores of 17 and 10 for their 27 points. New Bremen quarter scores of 10 and 8 for their 18. Hence, we are at 27-18 here at halftime. Mark Miller has been keeping stat numbers. What do you have, Mark? For New Bremen from two-point range, 5 of 10. Marion Local hit 8 of 14. They both hit two threes, but it took New Bremen 12 attempts. Marion Local only 8. Free throws, two of three for New Bremen. Perfect five for five for Marion Local. Marion Local's doubling up New Bremen on the rebounds, 14 to seven. 10 turnovers for New Bremen and eight for Marion Local in the first half. Jerry, interesting first half. Your observations on the first half, what we might see in half number two. Well, you know, for one, uh, New Bremen, they're getting the shots. I, I, you know, I think they're doing what they want to do and the shots just haven't been falling from three. I think that's going to be a big key in the second half is just keep doing what you're doing. I think Marion Local, I think they're going to be a little bit more patient on the offensive end because even if they do finally collapse all the way through on the big guys, reversing that ball gives a quick open or a better open shot. But I think they'll be a little bit more patient to go to that high low again. What are you thinking, Mark, as you look into half number two? Well, I'm thinking if, you know, two of 12 from three-point range, and granted, they, they're, they're, what, 28% coming in, so they're not great three-point shooters, but if they just hit a couple more of those, we got a game that's a lot yeah. tighter than this. So I, I agree with Jerry. they got to, you know, hit a couple, and that's easy for us to say, yeah. right? You don't have a six-foot, uh, nine arm coming at you, <laughs> but uh, if they hit a couple of threes on the outside, it sure will help them. Very balanced scoring, as we might expect from these two teams. Ben Saylor and Alex Holman each have five points for New Bremen. Uh, seven points by Jack Kanapke and five other players have scored for Mary Local. Guys, I want to ask you one opinion on things. You know, we've added an extra round of playoffs now in football, and because of that, New Bremen will play 12 basketball games in the month of January. New, uh, Mary Local is going to play 11. That's a lot to ask for some young men and their coaching staff. You're asking the wrong guy if you want me to say anything good about that excellent round of playoffs. No. Making a young high school kid play 16 ball yeah. games to win a state championship is ridiculous. The NFL just increased it from 16 to 17. And those guys have personal trainers year round. You gotta be kidding me that we're making high school kids play for five months to win a state championship. I think it's ridiculous. You know, sometimes I don't think people see how the right hand and the left hand, uh, you know, I'm trying not to be critical here when I say this, but you know, at the same time, You've got 22 basketball games. Remember when we coached? How, we had 18. 18. You know, when you're asking 22, you can say all you want about it's more revenue from the school. I, I'm not. That's not what it's about. I mean, I was in the athletic director where we didn't look at it that way. But when you're asking to crowd all those games in and 
you've expanded the playoffs, so now you have more teams that are pushing their seasons back. That's tough. It, it is very, very difficult. I think we would all agree, if you give me a chance to play 16 high school football teams win a state championship, I'm jumping on board. Yep. And if you give me a chance to play 12 basketball games or 11 basketball games in January, which means I don't have to practice, I'm <laughs> jumping on board to that one as well. Yeah, good point. All right, appreciate your opinions on that, guys. It's 27-18, Marion Local at half. Second half action coming up after this. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor for the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt, seamless spouting. Mark Shine, Mark Miller, Jerry Snodgrass from the hangar, and Marion Local gets the ball first here in half number two. You know, Mark, I think we solved all athletic problems at halftime, but yeah. I think the answer to all of them, honestly, lies in this gymnasium. Yeah. You know, these communities, honestly, it just explains so much of what's right about sports. Very local turned the ball over on their opening possession, trying that high-low play. So New Bremen will get first crack at points here in half number two. Ball's tipped. One of the top defensive jobs we've seen this year is Aaron Tiemann, who averages 13.1 points per game has not scored yet. He, he's barely had a chance to get a shot off. Right. He's been defending so well. Yeah, if you're New Bremen, you got to figure he's going to have a bigger second half, and that'll add to your chances to come back and make this a game again. Much of that comes from Brandon Ike, plus his teammates, who's defended very, very well against number two for the black-shirted New Bremen Cardinal. Yeah, I, I'm just going to say that about Brandon Ike. He's all over him. Patient possession for the Cardinals, trailing by nine. It's Want to get something going here coming out of the halftime break? There's just not many open looks, is there? No, there's not. Here's Teeman for three. Got a screen. Uh oh, look out. When the first one goes down. Yep. Confidence rises. He got a great screen that time for that one. Cuts the lead to six. His 15th three point field goal here in game number nine. Holman works in the lane, short jumper for him. And Kanapke tips, but misses it. The rebound comes to Evanite. Here comes team in the other way. I'm trying to find Teeman again. Yeah, see there if he, he is found right it. Here. There's Holman inside. Kneekamp tried to pick him up. Jumper out of the corner will go up by Scheib. That missed. That blah ball was partially blocked by Pullman, I think. You know, and I'm watching David Holman, you know, for New Bremen. He's just a he's just a running machine. He never stops. Tay Hess. Holman. He camp looking inside. Cannot find it inside. Holman heads baseline. A little push up for him. Knee camp rebound, size matters. And Knee camp rolls in points five and six. He's got a basket in each quarter tonight. The lead at eight. Here's Teeman off another screen. And got oh. another one. Now that yes. was not an easy shot. That was not. Does a great job coming off that screen with his feet ready to shoot, his hands. You know, in a good shooting position. His pivot off that right foot that time was exceptional. Yes. Just past the screen. Here's Holman with defensive pressure on Hess. Back cut, knee camp. Good help defense that time as Evan Ike got over there. A little flip shot inside, and Ike rebounds that one. Evan with a good defensive series. Where's two? He's hit two in a row. Off the screen that time. Deep three this time. That one was blocked. And the rebound was secured inside by Cooper Scheib, who gets fouled and will go to the free throw line. Free throw tonight are sponsored by Wright State Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. The foul went to Luke Pullman's first foul. You know, I watched a uh, uh, team and after that missed shot, you know, and it's just like, you know, he didn't say my bad or anything. And that means I can tell you right now, next open shot, he's going to shoot it again. He's not backing <laughs> off. 
love that in a shooter. Yeah, great shooters, always looking forward to the next one, yep. right? Leads down to four, a little zone action this time. Knee camp, and the ball will go out of bounds. You know, the thing I like about both of these teams, now obviously Bremen plays it more. When you play zone, it is not a passive zone. No. Yeah. We're coming after you. Some guys think that uh, that zone action means the rest a little bit, not these guys. Team has set the screen and tried to flare off of it. And we got an over back call under defensive pressure. Yeah, there's a method to that madness in the zone. You know, it's not just go back there and rest and, you know, it's then we'll come out next time in a full court or something. No, 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 no. It's you're moving just as much in, in that zone as you were man to man. Austin Niekamp inbounds to Tate Hess, and they're going to stay with the zone. Yep. Here's Pullman for three. Luke Pullman has five in the game and his sixth three-point field goal of the season. The lead is at six. That was a big shot from Aaron. They were listing just a little bit. Penetration dribble. Pullman's looking for somebody. Alex gives it up. Here's a drive to the goal and a scoop shot that will not fall inside for Dylan Bombauer, here we come the other way after a Kanapke rebound. Pullman wanted to light it up again. He's ready. Yeah, he's open. He's, he knows he's it. He's got it in the seam of that 2-3 zone. He got another one. He knew it. Back Jerry, to back. Pulling that one all the way balls. down the floor. And going to the rim inside is Bombauer, and he will get to go to the free throw line because of that. Mark Shine, I got to tell you, when you sent me the rosters, I didn't even look at the top. I just looked at the name. Holman, Pullman, Eifer, <laughs> Mesher, Eink, Rethman, Niekamp, Kanapke. I think I did all their brothers or their dads <laughs> yeah. or something. You knew that was Marion Local's roster, huh? Familiar names. Free throw goes up hard for Bob Hour, our Lake State campus free throws. Well, Mark, I could add to that and say, you know, why are these teams always good? Yeah, uh, follow yeah. the lineage, there you, you know. Yeah. How, how many years did you do this, Mark? What year did you start doing this? 91. 91. Yeah. And uh, finished full time in 18. Second free throw goes. And what do we got? Timeout going to go to the Debrima Cardinals. Our timeout also. You're watching high school basketball at WOSN. <laughs> Out of town, we can't get WSN. WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wsn.tv to sign up. First time out of the game goes to Corey Stevens. His team trails by seven following that free throw. A post-game show for you this evening. At that time, we'll give you some stat numbers and talk about our Stolly Hustle Award winner doubled up out front. Good hustle, but I believe that Saylor was out of bounds when he touched the ball, and Coach Guttermiller went did. down. He took down Coach Guttermiller, didn't he? Yeah. He's hurting. Yes, he is he really is. hurting. You know, I, I was going to, I did this last week too, you know, and in light of so much that's happened in the NFL that the world saw, you know, a real big shout out to our trainers that are here tonight. Angela Shirk from Marion Local, Zach Malin for uh, New Bremen. I will tell you what, you can't do without them. Pullman missed that shot. The rebound comes on Carter Elking on the backside. I talked to her a little while ago. She dealt with the, the facial injury last week. Three ball, that one will go to Carter Elking. She dealt with the facial injury last week to Jaden Mesher and the amount of blood spilt and what she had to do and eventually needed some facial surgery. He's going to be out a couple weeks, but there's your trainer right on the spot right. doing her job and trying to comfort that young man. Three out of the corner, misses. Good check out Holman. Here comes David the other way. Another three ball. This is going to go up by Shive. Yep. Drilled it. Is it going to count? It does count. 
Back-to-back -back threes. That one from Cooper Shy gives him eight points in the game. Well, that's big. Seven points in the game, excuse me. Well, we talked about it coming out of the halftime, right? You hit a couple of those threes that you missed in the first half, and now it's 35-33. All right, in that, they assessed a rebound foul to Jack Kanapke, his second. This could be a huge play right here, and they do track it down near midcourt. Leaves it two. Cardinals on a roll, shooting the three ball. You talked about it at halftime, both of you. They can make a couple of those. It's a game, and that's where we're at. Trapped in the corner, and timeout. Corey yep. Stevens timeout. 2.17 to go in the third. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now's a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. Corey Stevens with two timeouts, and that one was to save a turnover. Well, you know, Mark, the threes this quarter, you know, a big story for New Bremen, but you know, last Saturday we saw a young man from Botkins. We had the Botkins Fort Recovery game, and what, he hit five or six in the third quarter? Yeah, he hit five in the third quarter, one in the fourth. He had six threes all year. He made six in the second half, and Botkins pulled away from Fort Recovery. Now there's a three that'll bounce short and rebound to Luke Pullman. Coach Stevens reacted like that wasn't the shot that, that he wanted. But they've been hot from the three-point line. Here's a cut inside. Skip pass. Pullman gets a three look. He got that one. Three in the quarter for him. And 11 points all together for a guy averaging 2.9. Gets his first start tonight. David Holman. And that was a pretty easy goaltending call. <laughs> Much like Mark Miller in his playing days. Uh, I do that on Jack Papa's shot yeah. to my grandson. <laughs> Reach up through the net and knock it out. Hey, wait a minute. He didn't have a three-point line when he played. Oh, no. Uh -uh. No. We weren't allowed to dunk. Didn't affect no. my play at all. Uh, didn't have a three-point line. Didn't affect my play at all. But what do we got here? A little timeout to scoreboard. But that that the way you leaped, much like what Jack Kanapke did right there with that uh, that goaltending right there. I saw you do that many times. Yeah. Open gyms. Uh, yeah, we used to play a lot of basketball together. We did for a fact. Before we got old and decrepit. Before I blew an Achilles at Temple Christian playing church league. Well, oh. <laughs> now, Jerry, you are in the Upper Sandusky Hall of Fame. Yes, I am. Yes, Thank you, you are. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, and I always tell the story that, uh, you know, talk about that speed and agility. You know, I, I've mentioned this many times that when I was in high school, a freshman, I was struck by lightning and was lucky enough to live. And my nickname of Flash, you know, for a while when you went back to ended as soon as I hit the basketball court. <laughs> Four-point lead, Marion Local. Cardinals making a serious run at him here in the first seven minutes of the second half. Tate Hess under pressure from Tiemann. And Tiemann got his hand caught in the cookie jar for his first foul. You know, Mark, we're, we talk about rebounding, and I've always been a, a big advocate, you know, the, the John Wooden fan on rebounding and the war on the boards by, uh, what was the guy's name that wrote that? George Ravling. Yeah, George Ravling. And I was, you know, you, you know, my vertical jump in high school, you could pretty much, might get a deck of cards underneath my feet, but the art of checking out, the art of knowing that every shot that's going up is probably going to be missed. And when you learn that art, you become a lot better rebounder. He came, caught the ball behind the backboard. Holman with a steal, and his team will secure the ball. Here's Holman in a headed baseline. Hess cut him off. And then steal by Ranley coming the other way. Ranley, and we're going to get a foul. I think it was before, it was before. Yeah, before the shot. Yeah, they wanted that NBA continuation, but it is going to happen. <laughs> okay. Thank goodness. Evan yeah. Ike becomes the first player in the game with three personal fouls. Yeah, they've had some fouls, but they've spread it out, haven't they? It's Holman coming off the floor, and if anybody deserves a break with 41.8 to go here in the quarter, it's him. I bet it's not for long, huh? Right after the break. 
Yeah, it's a good time when you see coaches sub, you know, especially on the defensive end. You give them a break, let them sit the minute in the quarter, at the quarter break, and come out full strength in the fourth. Cooper Scheib did a really nice job of stopping Hess from going baseline, and we're going to get a foul. And Coach Gunnamiller is up and moving, but not very well. He may need that trainer yeah, before the night's he's over. He's going to need some ice after this game. That foul went to Dylan Bambauer. He now has two. And the team fouls are even at three here in the second half. Bob the Kanapke, they've done a nice job with Jack tonight. And we're going to get an offensive foul. Jack Kanapke will pick up foul number three. An offensive foul turnover will give the basketball back to the Cardinals. And you know, he felt he was held in there. And yeah. Many of the, we're on the uh, Marion local side, of course. Mary, many of the Marion local officials did not approve of the call. <laughs> stands nevertheless. Wow. Deep three, Teeman, watch out. We have seen this from him in past years when Aaron Teeman gets it going. He's got nine and a quarter off of the three point line. Flyers trying to get the last shot. Steal, Cardinals. Marion Local will be up one as we head to the fourth, but momentum swinging to the team wearing black and gold. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back for quarter number four, where our scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. Mark Schein, Jerry Snodgrass, Mark Miller. Got some quick numbers before we get to this one? Yeah, six for 13 from two-point range from New Bremen. Seven of 20 from three, four of seven from the line. 12 rebounds, 12 turnovers. Marion Local looks like nine of 20. Five out of 12 at three point. Five for five at the free throw line, 18 rebounds and 12. And if you compare that to halftime, those stats are evening up. Back cut, Holman couldn't finish inside and Kanapke rebounds and draws contact. That's one you really want as a coach. You got the possession, you know it's a special play that's talked about, you're set up during the timeout or during the quarter break, you really want that one. Of course the that negative was, lead, right, the first lead. Not, not only that, but uh, he, he picked up a foul then after his, right. his layup wouldn't go for him. His second for David Holman. Team's fourth. Each team has 14 fouls here in half number two. Tate Hess. This is Ike. Holman had nine in the quarter for Marion Local. Teeman had nine for the New Bremen Cardinals. Lob inside. Kanapke finishes on a well passed ball. Yeah, nice soft hands, too. After a scoreless third quarter, Jack Kanapke has nine in the game. You know, handles his body so well on that, you know, without picking up an offensive Holman's foul. Holman's going to get a chance for an and one. David Holman fought his way to the rim and drew contact. This is going to be a Wright State Lake Campus free throw. Whether you're interested in associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply. Missed the free throw. Missed the free throw. We'll head back the other way. Seven points for Holman. It's still a one-point lead. Marion Local. Well, New Bremen trying to get that tie or that yeah. first lead of the game. They couldn't get into the free throw line. Knee camps tries to work in the lane. A little jump hook comes out for him. Alex Holman rebounds right to the rim. Oh, but unable to finish inside that time with Shy. We'll come back the other way. They've had a couple of opportunities to get yeah. the lead and couldn't. Like the aggressiveness by Shy taking it in on the big guy. Just couldn't get it through the net. You know, and that's what those big guys do. They just alter your shot enough. Yep. 2 3 zone, which has been the Cardinal staple here for most of the second half. Here's Pullman. Hess into the lane, and we're going to get contact, and this will be a shooting foul as the foul will go to Dylan Bombauer, who now has three fouls. You guys talk about how good on defense Hess is, how quick he is and aggressive. He uses that same thing when the ball's on the floor. Man, he got down that lane in a hurry. Tate Hess, 75% free throw shooter, has not been there this evening. That is his fifth point tonight. 
And uh, here comes number 32, Evan Ike, back in the game. Also returning will be Mitchell Randley. Randley will replace Ike. Ike has three fouls. The last time Holman went to the goal. Pass again. Seven for seven from the free throw line for Marion Local. That no. is not their M.O. They yeah. usually are not very good from the free throw line. No, and Hess is the one guy you do want there. He's done very well, 75 Steal, Hess. Tate Hess headed to the rim and finishes. He's got eight and a turnover because it didn't take the ball out of bounds properly. While we walk the length of the floor, we're going to take a break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Improperly inbounding the basketball. Did Marion, uh, did the DeBremen Cardinals, so they trail by five, and this could be a good run here for Marion Local, and a lob pass misses inside. Right idea. That's They want to go that high-low, but you also have three guys camping in there, you know, all around Kanapke. Yeah. Here's New Bremen, David Holman. And his bounce pass went on the baseline. Back in the game, Ben Saylor. Well, a lot more turnovers for both teams than normal. No surprise, right, with right. the defensive yeah. pressure yeah. that they're facing on offense. Yeah, it's not carelessness. It's just, you know, it's good defense. I'm looking at the 40. Four points the Flyers have in the games that New Bremen has won. They have given up 38.7. In their losses, they've given up 57.7. So defense has been their calling card, and Marion Local is above that number right now. To the rim, Hess, he has another one. Man, he can Six elevate. Six points in the quarter. Whew. Pushes his team back up to seven. Team had almost lost the basketball and double yeah. dribbled it. You don't see it called enough, you know. Right. They get right. too often, you know. It's like he didn't do it. But yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. He he was trying to get away with somebody slapped out of my hands, but nobody did. Big run by Tate Hess. Six points in the quarter. Puts his team up seven. He has the basketball right now. Here he goes again. That shot's blocked. He tips it to Kanapke, and Kanapke is fouled. And that will be Evan Ike's fourth foul. He has been battling Jack Kanapke all night long. Kanapke with three free throws tonight and a chance to get free throws four and five will get him to 11 points. You know, if you're Jack Kanapke, you, you really have to have a lot of patience. You know, you get pounded in there. You know, and, you know when you get fouled, you get fouled. And you just have to have the patience, you know, to keep your head in the game and not get upset. We were with the uh, longtime basketball coach here at Mary Local tonight, Jack <laughs> Albers. A legend. He is, and, and spoke with Jack some, and we, we both agreed that a lot of times officials let the big guys get bumped around inside thinking they can take care of themselves, and yeah. fouls should be called like that one right there. Yep. And I saw that uh, Coach Albers had a nice discussion and talk with the Mary Local uh, players this he week. He did. Corey Stevens sees this team trail by eight. They've got the lead down to one. He's going to take his third timeout. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. The free WSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WSN. Search WSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. Good flurry here by Tate Hess has pushed his lead back up to eight. New Bremen has got a timeout. Corey Stevens' team's got time, Jerry, but not a lot of time. When no, we're they don't. The you know, and again, you wonder if you know a couple threes drop and it changes everything. He's teaming, trying to get away from Hess now, and gets the inbounds pass and gets doubled up. You also have to give Mary Local a little credit. They've picked up that a little yeah. bit better, and you know, nothing's been nearly as open for them this for New Bremen on the perimeter. 1-3-1 one, one zone here. Gave them a completely different look. 
to the goal and a foul. Good drive that time by Dylan Bombauer. That foul go to those. Okay, this goes on Mitchell Randley. Mitchell's first. Each team now has six. And if you're looking for a game reset in this one, the arrow favors the Cardinal. Each team has six team fouls as Baumbauer makes the first one. Marion Local has not called a timeout yet, and New Bremen has used three of their five. Well, Marion Local came out of that timeout, you know, switching defenses, you know, went to that 1-3-1. One, one. We'll see how long they stay in it. I, so often you'll see coaches do that, you know, just, uh, you know, the other team spends so much time, you know, what, we're, what we want to do, and they come out, and they're in a different defense. Baumbauer rattles that one in. Now those are points four and five for him, very much needed points. Team is going to get a little break. The dreaded 1-3-1. One, one. That's yep. the only defense we played in high school. Really? Yeah, we, unless we were behind, then we had to go man-to-man. -man. We saw that last week a lot, you know, and yeah. how many corner shots we saw taken because that's about the only thing you're going to get out of it. And Guess what position I got yeah, to play got on to run the corner. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> Hess, knee camp, trying to get inside and get stripped out of bounds. We'll stay with Marion Local. In front of the student section. Demons break didn't last very long. He's back in. Got to have him on the floor. Yep. He's the one that brought him back the first time. Six-point game. Is it just me, guys? Is the scoreboard a little bit slow tonight? or I'm having trouble keeping, uh, keeping track of the scoreboard. <laughs> Six-point lead. Kanapke trying to post up inside. He and Bombauer going at it. They've done a good job of fronting him in the low post. Yes, they have. Yeah, those first couple lobs got in there, but since then, they've really had to work to get the ball inside. Good patient possession. Why not? Six-point yeah. lead. Hess gets doubled up. And what do we got? Got a foul going to be called. This will be free throw time as Holman will pick up foul number three. Uh, your, your opinions, guys, we don't see a lot of guys in the low post posting up much like Kanapke does, so we don't defend a lot down there very often anymore, and I think New Bremer's done a good job with it. They really have. And I think they've done such a good job on the perimeter, too, because oftentimes Kanapke will be on the wrong side of the floor because there's been so much pressure on the perimeter that he's cutting one way and the ball's going the other. Well, the players wearing white jerseys tipped it to Hess. Offensive rebound off a free throw. Knee camp lobs it inside, and Kanapke dropped the basketball. He was yeah. ready to shoot before he had it. They had exactly what they wanted. Oh, and I think that's going to go off a team, and it did. Hess made a really nice yes, defensive play. Defensive back in football. Yep. You know, I mean, it, it, it's a... Sports skills transfer, right? It most certainly is. Got playing four round one with Kanapke inside. And this is Hess. And we're going to get an offensive foul or a block. What is it? I think it's a block. It's nope. going to be an offensive foul. We'll go against Luke Pullman. The turnover goes the other way. Subs coming in. This will bring in number 32, Evan Ike. Both teams have done a good job with their bench tonight. I think, you know, they've run players in, given them breaks when they needed it. Six-point game. Teeman gets two screens. And goes baseline, and oh, almost a steal on the baseline by a heads up Luke Pullman. You know, we have just under three minutes to go, and you know, we look at that score 47 41. Somebody somewhere is going to look at that score and say, by golly, they need the shot clock. Yeah. That <laughs> shot clock has absolutely nothing to do with tonight's game. No. Lots of shots, just a lot of misses. Yep, a lot of good, solid defense. Holman cut back door, but was covered up. Here's Teeman off a screen from 17 feet. And Niekamp secured the rebound. 
Niekamp averages six boards a game. I'll bet he's got that tonight. And a Coach Guttermiller timeout. 2.27 to go. See what Marion Local does coming out of the break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. We'll say thanks to viewer supported TV44 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donation of viewers to enable airing this game and others locally produced programming. Donate now at WTOW.com and click Donate. First flyer timeout with 2.27 to go. You know, Marks, I was thinking about, you know, I think Coach Gattemiller called that timeout, you know, on the sideline there when the player was in trouble. I read, I, I was speaking with an official from out of state, so is that, not an Ohio official, but tells the uh, coaches before the game asks them if they have an offense called five out. Yeah. So, you know, when somebody is yelling five out, not to confuse that with time out. Yes. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, that's a whole new. <laughs> uh, wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, that's okay. I think the, the bounce pass from the official was. Correct. Yeah. Well, that's the right way to handle that. One. Back yeah. cut. Hess. And they covered him up in a hurry. Good decision by Hess not to force the ball. Holman tips it in the backcourt. He and Hess go scrambling for it. Hess gets it. Numbers, flyers. And let's see what they choose to do with it. Seaman chooses to foul with 2.11 to go. Eighth team foul to the free throw line will go. Sending Luke Pullman. Not many free throw opportunities on the year for Luke, but he's made 75%. Well, in a team that shoots 64% on the year, just under 64, I guess we'll see how good a free throw shooters they are down the stretch. He's got 11 points in the game because he had nine threes in quarter number three. And because it's a one and one we can get Ben Saylor into the game. Point 12, Luke Pullman. Well, Luke Pullman has done a nice job tonight. His first start, we talked about in there for Mesher because of the injury, and he's hit some threes. Here he's hit a couple of free throws. Done a nice job for his team. Yeah, he did. Pushes the lead to eight. You know, and you said it. They're missing their leading scorer tonight. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so, you know. And leading defender. Absolutely. Teeman, skip pass. This three ball will go up from Saylor. There's Hess again. All over. He has been everywhere here in the last six minutes or eight minutes or so and keeps his pivot foot. And we're going to get a foul. That one will go to Aaron Tiemann and put Hess back to the free throw line. You know, to say that about Luke Pullman, you know, after the game's over, if they are victorious on this, you know, I know coach is going to say, you know, he gave us everything we needed in a big game tonight. Yeah. Talk about schedules. Mary Local will play six games in 11 days. And on Sunday, there at Fort Laramie, the Springfield Shawnee and the Fort Laramie Classic as he makes that free throw. That's point 11. Then they've got Fort Recovery on Friday at Jackson Center on Saturday, St. Henry on Tuesday, Parkway on Friday, Fort Laramie on Saturday, and Anna on a Monday. A player's dream and a coach's, coach's nightmare, nightmare, right? Hess got that one, didn't he? And his coach takes a timeout. What a heads-up play. If you're looking ahead for schedules for the New Bremen Cardinals. They are at Arcanum on Saturday night. Then they go to Ottaville on Tuesday. Next week, they're back into Midwest Athletic Conference action. They have St. Henry at home, a bot kids for a, at home. And again, they're going to play 12 games in the month of January are the New Bremen Cardinals. How do you practice a week like that? I, I, how do you? I, yeah. I you mean, don't change game plan much, do you? No, you don't. Stay basic. Hey, Coach Shine, we missed our we missed Krispy Kreme donuts somehow. Yeah, they do that here. I see boxes of them things yeah, they, floating around. They, they pre-sell them. This used to be the king of the cake raffle right here. Oh, uh, it didn't matter. I where remember. I remember one time at Miller City, he won like two in the same night. Yeah, but what he we, was giving them to the crew. That's and, what we did. Yeah, we, we always gave it to the crew, our hardworking people. 
You know, tonight we got Megan and Cassidy and Mia here. Yeah. And <laughs> Man, they're... Are they well, selling them? I'm seeing yeah, they sell them. boxes everywhere. Yeah, they, they pre-sell them. Oh, I want them. Yeah. I want donuts. That's my grandkids in the morning. <laughs> it saved me from having to go down the path. Yeah. All right. Back to the free throw line we will go. We're actually taking out of bounds on the baseline. Yep. Way in the corner. Nine-point lead. Here's Knee Camp using the 6-9 guy to inbound. 6'8", I guess, to be accurate. Tried to throw it to a 6'9 guy. It's tipped out of bounds and will stay with Marion Local. Kind of a tough spell right here for New Bremen. They're coming off a two-game losing streak, one to Coldwater and then the Rushi Raiders, who've been having an outstanding year. Here's Hess into the lane. Bounce pass. And Kanapke with an emphatic finish has 12. That's dropped a dime from Hess. It's an 11-point game. Holman goes up and scores. Nine for him. Here's a surprise. The quarterback on your state championship football team is making nice passes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't even notice him in the first half. But he's been the player of the game in the second half. He's doing it all. Trying to get open now and can't get away from Holman. His coach has to take a timeout with 58.4 left to go. Mark, you come from the eastern part of the state. Who's the basketball power over in your area right now? Well, you know, it's pretty even this year. You know, you got the same ones that are always good. Kent McKinley, Maslin, Jackson. Um, you know, they're the, the Lake football team that went to the semifinals in football, they're pretty good in basketball. but. You know, it's the small schools over there this year that look like they're pretty good. A school called Malvern yeah. uh, down by Lake Mohawk. They're really, really good. Um, I'm trying to think. There should be somebody else over there. But, you know, it's really pretty even. You know, you mentioned coming from over there. And, and when Marion Local, Coldwater, New Bremen, Minster, they come to the state championship football games over there that's in camp. And everybody knows them as football schools, and they are very intrigued by where are those schools at and right. what are they like, you know? And I tell them, you know, just look for the church steeple. That's the next yeah. town, you know, yeah. just drive to it because it's so flat. And they say they must just be football crazy. Well, if they were here tonight, they'd realize, no, they're sports crazy right. no. because the kids are here, like Jerry said, grandparents. It's an event. This is what you do in these small towns. And to grow up here is, is a blessing. A lot of young kids would probably say, what a curse. There's nothing to do around here. Yeah. Well, they're doing the best thing yes. they could be doing by being at this game right here tonight. So I try to explain to them it is a phenomenon. And uh, I've been blessed to be able to do these games for many, many years. You guys still do them. It is a lot of fun over here. And, and so many families are they're, they're all supportive of other families. And that support. They all know each other. They do. There are, a lot of them are related. <laughs> yeah. Know, even in the different towns, which is really yeah. unique. Team in fouls from behind. Well, Jerry, you've been a part of the state tournament for a long time in football. And when Marion Local plays in football, the whole MAC yes. community is there. It is not just Marion Local or right. New Bremen or Coldwater or whomever. And they're all the fans, the, the players. They're all very supportive social media-wise to, to support who's ever there. I always used to get a kick out. I'd go to some of these places and... I never forget going to Shady Side. Who all? Who, they had their they had their good days, and they would just ask. You know, they would they couldn't wait for the divisions to be or the regions to be assigned, and all and the divisions. And all they would tell me is, "Hey, we don't care. Just as long as we're in a different one than Coldwater." And, <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. But they would always ask, "How do they do it?" Yeah. And he started to tell them. Said, "You need to go there. Yeah. You just need to go there. Yeah. Need to go see it." Flyers have gone zone. They get out on team in a hurry. Here's a three that'll go up and nailed it. Three ball that time will go to Cooper Scheib. He's got 10 in the game. That's his second three-point field goal. One other thing, Jerry, this year in Northwest Ohio, the, the experimental this year with a tournament drop. Interesting. We're going to use the RPI, and we're going to use that computer to decide the seating order. Yep. But then after that, it's the same as it always has been. Correct. The top right. seed gets to choose what line to go on in the second seed and so on. But we're going to use a computer. And I, I talked to a couple coaches last night, Jerry. Suppose your point guard's out for six games. Right. Okay. And, and you lose five of them. 
and you get him back and you're really, really good again, in, a, in an old seed meeting, you could bring that up. And now you can. It's all computer numbers. You know, and when you say, you know, what you're doing is taking out that coach that the best team, they vote him last. Yeah. So you can be – that, that doesn't happen much in basketball. Right. It, 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 I will tell you truly, it does in some other sports because they don't scout and know those other teams. So I know the young man, the, the Martin, that uh, created that system. But, um, you, you know, I, I just know this. When you do that, how a team in the Northwest District gets to a regional tournament is now different than how a team uh, from yes. another part of the state gets to the regional tournament. There's your quarterback throwing a home run ball. And finishing is Mitchell Ranley. Holman gets the ball tipped away from behind. We'll get free throws out of that one. But Jerry, you know, you talk about somebody, you know, I'm going to vote you the bottom seed so I get a better one. When we started doing that in person and people knew right. who voted for who, that came to an end. Correct. Here's Holman to the free throw line. He's got seven in the game. Eight. It's about the last time you would do something like that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, the ethics of that, and you're just not going to last when you do that. Tournament draw comes up early in February, the 5th for the girls, 7th yeah. for 12th for the boys, something like that. Pullman's got 11 points now. Well, that's the other thing, too. You know, you're, you're making that, you know, maybe some people have a heart of their schedule after, you know, a yep. couple tough games after that. <laughs> he just ran him loose again off a of screen, and... Hess chose not to make the throw. Foul that time will go to Dylan Bombauer, who has four in a game. Good job by Dylan. It was a pretty physical foul, and he immediately turned to Kanapke and made sure that he knew he was just trying to foul, not anything extra. There are Ten team fouls, so we're going to be shooting the double bonus here. We'll have a postgame show coming up in just a few moments. We'll present our final numbers and stat numbers and things like that, as well as present our Stally Hustle Award winner. Kanapke now has 13 points in the game. Well, they've turned that free throw shooting yeah. problem around tonight. Pretty good for them tonight, Yes, isn't they it? have been very good at the free throw line. I really like how Corey Stevens put his team together. You know, you talk about team and average is 13 points a game as that free throw goes. But there are seven other guys who score between three and, and, seven, and seven points a game. Seven guys have more than 20 rebounds on the season. There's a long three. That one missed everything. Four players have 11 or more assists. Five guys have 11 or more steals. He has really created a, a sense of team here as Corey Stevens. You're right about that. I, that's, I've been very impressed with them. You know, yeah, they looks like right now they're not going to make it, you know, not going to pull this one out. But they have played so well together as a team. And You know, I think something that kind of invites that level of team play, too, is it, they've got a lot of interchangeable guys. Yeah. And it, I haven't noticed that anybody's playing more minutes, right. maybe teaming and homing, but it seems like they're all in and out a lot, you know? So uh, it really fosters the team concept, and they've made it work for them. Austin Niekamp has six points. Missed his opening free throw here. They strike me as a team that, you know, I talked about how tough is it going to be to play that schedule where you're playing, what, five out of eight nights or something yeah. like that? I think this team can do it. Yeah. I think New Bremen can do that. And he rolls that one in for point seven. His team is going to get a deep three. It's a board ball, and Hess rebounds. Not, excuse me, that's not Hess. That is Mitchell Randley, 10 and not 12. And the arrow favors the home team. Normally we talk about teams getting out without a significant injury mark. Tonight we've got to hope that Coach Guttermiller gets out. Uh, yeah, he's uh, trying to hit the ice bag. He's That's not moving sure. real well this evening. Wood, worst coach the best. Marion Local with a 21-point fourth quarter will take a 59-48 victory in the MAC tonight. Over the New Bremen Cardinals. We're able to be back in just a moment with a post game show. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Hager. Mark Shine, Mark Miller, Jerry Snodgrass, and men. We go to a lot of high school basketball games. What happens when the horn hits? Everybody goes home. 
What happens in Marion Local? What they happens visit. in the MAC? <laughs> we visit with our friends and family and make it a family event, an evening event. Yeah. Explains so much, doesn't yeah. it, about this conference? Yeah. It, it really does. We're going to talk here for a moment about a Marion Local 59-48 victory over New Bremen. Our first order of business after this game is to present our Stolly Hustle Award winner. Check out the WSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner. Didn't take long to put this one together. The guy who really turned the effort around for Marion Local tonight, we're going to give this to Tate Hess. So well deserved. You know, made a huge difference in that second half. So much collapsing inside on the big man, and, you know, he, he really made a lot of things happen. I liked his penetration down the middle. Right. You that know, dunk, he, he, that he, dunk yeah. was really the yep, exclamation the dish point. For a layup, or the dunk especially, or to kick it out for an open three, I thought he just uh, raised the game to the next level in the second half. The New Bremen Cardinals will drop to five and four on the season. Three losses in a row for them going into a game Saturday night at Arcanum. They are two and two in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Quarter scores of 10, 8, 19, and 19. So big second half scoring for them. Actually nine win the fourth quarter. 19 and nine, but still a good source fourth quarter scoring for them. They are led in scoring tonight as typical balance. 11 from David Holman. Uh, 10 from Cooper Scheid, 9 from Aaron Tiemann, all in that quarter number three, and when they really had a good run going in the third quarter, Mark. Yep. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they, they had a couple of spurts. They got it down. They just couldn't climb that mountain, right? Yep. They had a couple of uh, two-point almost layups to go ahead. They had a free throw to tie. They couldn't do any. They just never had a lead. Mary Local, quarter scores tonight are for them of 17, 10, 11, and a big 21-point fourth quarter where they shot free throws very well. And Mark will give you those numbers in just a moment. That pushes the Flyers to 9-1 on the season. They are 3-0 in the Midwest Athletic Conference. 15 points from Luke Pullman in his first start tonight, including three three-point field goals and a perfect night at the free throw line. Jack Kanapke had 15. Our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight, Tate Hess, had 11. How about team stats, Mark? New Bremen. Two-point goals, 8 of 18. Marion Local, 14 of 27. Three-point goals, 8 of 24 for New Bremen, 5 of 12 for Marion Local. 8 of 12 from the free throw line for the Cardinals, and Marion Local, 16 of 19. After me saying they're not very good free throw shooters as a team. Marion Local, 25 to 13, won the rebounding battle, and 17 turnovers from New Bremen, 15 for Marion Local. Lots of good defense caused that. Jerry, fun night tonight. Your final thoughts? You know, it was. I will, I will tell you, I need to give a shout-out to Ryan Homan. You know, he sixth man, you know, a lot of times, had his first start tonight. And, again, what do you have, 15, 15 on the game? 15 tonight. You know, so really, really contributed. But all in all, I think it was just that size of Marion Local because, you know, Mark, you mentioned it, you know, a lot of penetration, you know, by New Bremen. But it was hard to connect on that when you yeah. got all that tall timber in there. Mark, appreciate you keeping stat numbers tonight and, and your final thoughts on our game this evening. Hey, it was fun. Always fun to come to yeah. the hangar, right? But more fun to be with you two guys. Yeah. Golly, Absolutely. good memories through the years. Let's keep it going. Mark, thanks for setting this up. Uh, it's awesome to come over and be with you guys. Let, let's throw a special prop out, too, to the athletic director. That's Dan Koenig. Yep. We're, we're in somebody else's spot tonight, and they moved a bunch of people around for us to have this particular area. Three of us could all fit together tonight, and Jerry, we deal with a lot of good athletic directors. There isn't a better one than Dan Katie. No, there is not. And you think about added to that, think about all of the tournament runs he's had yep. through the years uh, in so many sports. Yep. And that's a lot of work. I want to thank our sponsors tonight. That would be scoreboard by uh, Ultimate Outdoor. Our free throw sponsor tonight was Wright State Lake Campus. And, of course, our Sally Hustle Award winner. Our crew tonight here in the facility, Megan Sherrick, Mia Waddle, Cassidy Driscoll, Zach Keith will edit this together back at the station. It's been a fun night for me, too. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we do. Mary Local with a 59-48 win over the New Bremen Cardinals. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN. <laughs>